Hertz Magnetic Reversals. In the early 1900s, a French physicist named Bernard Bruin would often vacation with his family at Puy de Dome, a lava dome volcano in France where his university had a research station. Bruin was interested in many things, and one of them was in how rocks became magnetic. For many years, curious people had been noticing that baked bricks could become magnetic. Brun became interested in natural bricks at Puy de Dome. These rocks were formed when clay soil rich in iron got baked by lava that flowed over the top of them before hardening into basalt. Brun wanted to check out the magnetism of some natural bricks he found. He carefully cut out cubes of baked clay and marked which way was north on them before removing them from the field. Then Bruin measured the brick's magnetic field. Strangely, he found that the magnetic orientation that he expected was not what he observed. The direction marked north on the bricks was actually showing up as south when he used instruments to measure their magnetism. Bruin carefully measured and rechecked his data. But every time he expected to find north pointing north, it actually pointed south. This was very confusing. Brent thought about why this would be and proposed that the magnetic orientation of Earth's poles had changed between the time the clay was baked into bricks and the present time. Brent hypothesized that Earth's magnetic north and south poles had flipped at least once. Brent's fellow scientists did not flip over this idea. They thought that Brun had to be mistaken, or maybe he was just crazy. Either way, poor Brun died at the young age of 43 before he got a chance to investigate further. The idea of Earth's magnetic field flipping didn't get much attention again until the 1950s, when several scientists confirmed Brun's findings and developed a version of the geologic timeline that includes black and white segments that show periods of normal and reverse magnetic orientation. Long periods when Earth's magnetic field point one way or another are called crons. The four most recent crons are named after scientists who made important discoveries in the investigation of Earth's magnetic field. Brun, Matayama, Gauss, and Gilbert. Today, it's widely accepted that throughout the history of Earth, the North and South magnetic poles have switched places many times. Here's what scientists have learned about Earth's magnetic field so far. There doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason as to when the magnetic poles flip. Sometimes a period of normal polarity, when magnetic north is near the North Pole, lasts several thousand years, or even several million years. So, maybe you're wondering what it's like when Earth's magnetic field flips. A lot of people have this idea that it happens very suddenly, but that's actually not true. Scientists think a magnetic reversal happens over a period of about 2 to 12,000 years. Geologically speaking, that's suddenly, but definitely not suddenly for you or me. You could probably find a scary article or two on the internet about magnetic reversals destroying the planet. But throughout Earth's history, there's never been a mass extinction event that's been correlated with a magnetic reversal. And even though the magnetic field has flipped many, many times in Earth's history, the Earth has obviously never been destroyed. Inside Earth's liquid outer core, there are convection currents. Hot liquid iron and nickel rise up from Earth's center, and as they cool, they sink back down. The movement of molten metal is thought to create the electromagnetic current that surrounds our planet. Over 2,000 years ago, humans discovered that a mineral made up of iron and oxygen called magnetite, had magnetic properties. Seagoing people began to use this mineral, which they called lodestone, to help them find magnetic north for navigation. Earth's electromagnetic field protects us from ultraviolet radiation. Most scientists think that until Earth's magnetic field really got going, Earth was not a friendly place for life to live at all. So let's say you want to measure the magnetism of rocks for yourself. How would you do that? Can you just put a compass next to some rocks? Well, yes. A compass's red needle wouldn't necessarily point toward north if you were standing near some old lava deposits that were laid down at a time when Earth's magnetic field was opposite from what it is today. But that's not how scientists measure the magnetism of rocks today. They use a sensitive device called a spinner magnetometer to find out which way the magnetite bits inside of a rock are pointing. 
And here's an interesting fact too. Spinner magnetometers can tell scientists the latitude at which magnetic rock formed. Have you ever seen maps of what Earth looked like millions of years ago? One of the methods that have allowed scientists to figure out where on Earth continents were once located is through the use of spinner magnetometers. Pretty amazing, huh?